So, Tari's first word was Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> All right. In Spanish, in Spanish, it's Barbara. Oh, Barbara. in Spanish, it is Barbara. Barbara. Yeah. So, I used to call the... There was a lady that used to work in the bank where I used to bank many, many years ago. So, I didn't know whether she was... She was African-American or... Latino or, or, uh, or whether she was Caucasian, I didn't know. So I used to call her Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. Was that her name? Yeah. Oh. Okay, I you said that. No, her name was Barbara. But everybody called her Barbara. Ba ba Barbara. So I used to call her Barbara. Uh, yeah, something similar to that. Mm -hmm. Mary, are you on the line? Okay. Here we do love connection. Here we do midnight love. So welcome. Thank you very much. This is Edikai Mary, your host. Tonight... Let us discuss something very powerful, something very, very beautiful, something amazing, something that is possible. Um, <laughs> all of you are familiar with uh, the terms soulmates. Soulmates. The question that I have for you tonight is this. Um, why did your soulmate walk away? If he or she was really your soulmate, will they walk away? So let's look at it. What is a soulmate? Is there anything like a soulmate? When someone, when people fall in love, it's quite often to hear them talk about, you are my soulmate, I have found my soul. Well, can I be, can I be honest with you? <laughs> You have not found no soul. Okay? You've not found no soul. That person is his own mind. You are your own mind. There are certain things that are woven into the fabric of the universe that when you see somebody, then you can say, that person is one with me in several things, in several areas. That person is one with me. It also takes time to build someone that you can say, this is my mate. Someone can be your mate, M-A-T-E, your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your man friend, your woman friend. Someone that you are intimate with, fond of. But does that really reaches the goal? Is that really what we call a soulmate? Is it that when you are thinking about something, that person begins to feel and think the same thing? So you think that is a soulmate thing? Or you get sick, the person gets sick. Or something good happens to you and it happens to him. Or both of you happen to have share the same birthday. Or your children, if you have kids from different people, seems to share the same, they were born the same year or the same month or the same day. Coincidences. And you begin to think that coincidences presumed a soulmate situation. That's not true.
when 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 I read the story of David and Jonathan, the son of Saul, and it says they were like they, they were very intimate. It has to do with number one. Jonathan saw in David that David was a king. He saw in David what he would have loved to have seen in his father saw. He saw in David a friend that can never betray him, that honors him, and honors his father too. Left his home to come and walk in the palace of the king was able to manage a king that had a mental problem, was able to fight war, many warfares that no one in Israel was able to fight and won. So the hero that Jonathan was looking for in his father, he saw in David. And not only that, he saw in David a truthful person, not a manipulator, not a deceiver, someone who, when he tells you something, he will do everything to keep his word. He saw someone who knew his assignment and went for that assignment. Excuse me. He saw someone who was bound by the call of duty, service, responsibility. He saw in David deep love. A love that David described as stronger than love that he and Jonathan shared was, he said it was stronger, excuse me, than the love of a man and a woman. That's why Jonathan was willing to protect David from his own father. And Saul, the father of Jonathan, knew that the love that existed between David and Jonathan was so strong. He envied that relationship. He envied it. He was jealous that they had what he couldn't have. So he decided to kill David and even went as far as cursing, releasing a curse on his own son, Jonathan, calling her the son of a whore. I'm serious. It's just, that's how the, uh, degrading that was. That's the first time that we see such a strong intimacy of, of um, the living together of minds, spirits, colleagueship, and professionalism, all in one. So before you go ahead and begin to say that you found your soulmate, make sure that these things are there for you. One, you study somebody's way. You study to understand each other's way. And, and become the tool, the, the vehicle for that person to, to become the best in their area of destiny. This is very, very important word. Destiny. In their area of destiny.
a soulmate doesn't um, is not jealous or envious of your achievements. They don't come to compete with you. Or the person doesn't come to compete with you. Doesn't come to come and take all and leave you with nothing. Without planting nothing. So make sure that you know what you are doing. Make sure you know what you are saying. When you say that somebody is a soulmate. Because the question tonight is, if that person was a soulmate, why did they walk away? What happened to that soulmate thing? So Vicky and Mary, please write that down for me. Why did your soulmate walk away? Was that really your soulmate? Was that really your soulmate? Or were you dreaming a dream or being fooled? There are so many things that you have to take into consideration before you declare that somebody is your soulmate. Apart from what I've spoken so far, what do you think are the ingredients of a soulmate? What are the things that you must see in somebody that tells you that person is a soulmate? Let's go. Um, I'll speak on it for a minute. Um, integrity, honesty. Um, you got to uh, respect that person, and also uh, honor that person uh, um, as who they are. That's my take on it. Okay. Now, since you've answered that question, then why did your soulmate walk away? Did that? I've never had it. I've never had a male in my life that will call a soulmate. Okay. Good, good answer. Is there somebody who will help us here? Have you ever had a man or a woman that you can call a soulmate? Because we see a soulmate from the aspect of um, a man and a woman. There are also soulmates that might be a woman to a woman, a man to a man. This is not about gays or lesbian relationship. Please listen carefully. We are not talking about gays and lesbian relationship here. We are not talking about a sex thing here. So just get your mind out of the gutter. We are not talking about sex and intimacy of that type, of the bedroom type, or wherever it takes place. We are talking about something far more serious than just emotional traits and characteristics. Have you ever had someone that you call a soulmate? Why? Why did you call that person a soulmate? And if they were, why did they walk away? That's a question for you to answer. Why did your soulmate walk away? What is it that makes you think that's your soulmate? You have no answer. None of you has ever had a soulmate. Well, for the audience out there, if you are watching this program, I will encourage you, I will really encourage you to look down inside your heart and see whether you've ever had someone who comes around your life that qualifies to be a soulmate. And if that person truly was your soulmate, why did the person walk away? I want to have an answer from you. Leave your comment under this broadcast and uh, we will continue the conversation from there. Is there somebody that wants to inter interject something into this conversation tonight? So if someone walked away, that means they weren't really your soulmate. They were not really your soulmate. Yep. They were not. That person was not. If, if a person is they your soulmate. They thought it was. Mm -hmm. They thought it was, but it wasn't. If it is your soulmate, they will not walk away. It's impossible for a soulmate to walk away because if they walk away, they have nothing to walk away to. That's how it is. 
when you say that you are going home, say you live in another state and during Christmas, you are going to another state and you say you are going home to, uh, you are going home for Christmas. Are you going to a house? Yes. But what constitutes a home? People. People. Yep. It's somebody that makes a home. The house alone is not a home. The house is where you make a home out of. That's why many houses do not qualify for a home. You have to be aware of that. So if you are going home for Christmas, you are going home to somebody or to a family or to a city. That's how this thing goes. That's how it rolls. So if they walk away from you, they are not your soulmate. The person is not your soulmate. Yep. Yeah, and you were looking at the wrong things. You made a big mistake. Yeah, you were looking at Yeah, you were looking at the wrong things and you make a big old mistake. That's what it is. Because sometimes we see money, we think, ah, okay, this must be God. All good things in a relationship has nothing to do with God. It's people who set it up. It's like walking into a place and everybody's clapping for you. And they're telling you how great a girl you are. And you think, oh, this must be God. No, they set it up for you. There are things I do for people. I say to people, God moved me to do this for you. The majority of the things I do for people, I do it because I want to do it. It's not God telling me to do it. Because God is watching to see whether I have the gift of sensitivity to do it. Because some days, what has been piled up will be laid loose for me. Please write that down as a powerful key. Some days, what has been piled up will be laid loose for me by God. All the blessings that has been piled up will be let loose. So everything you think is a good thing is not. So all those things you think is a soulmate thing is not a soulmate thing. Somebody has just put up a program for you and you just follow. I'll give you an example. Uh, I posted a packet to somebody in a different country. That person couldn't pay the taxes on that product, the postal thing on that product. I felt pity for the person. I felt big time pity for the person. And I used my own personal money to ship it to the person. And it reached there within a few days. And the person called me and said, Oh, I thank God this is God. Oh, wow. God has, this is how God has blessed me. I said, no, it's not God blessing you. It's me. I choose to do it. It's not God told me. I choose to bless you. And those are the things that attract God. It's when you yourself choose them. I'm the one who chose to take $5,000 seed and give to somebody that is above me, who reigns over me in this earth. And I say, I'm giving you this because I need a big harvest for next year. I want you to be aware of how it works. I'm talking of, you, you guys know who my superior is, my archbishop is. The one that is in charge of something big out there in Africa. He's a sincere and a wonderful person. I'm not just doing that because he's a man of God. I care less about whether he's a man of God or not. What I care about is that he was said to be above me and to give me guidance. That's why whatever he does, I don't criticize. I see no evil. 
I say no evil. I follow what he tells me and it always works on me. That's the way it goes with me. I don't ask him what he does with his money. I have no time. That's me. When I see good things I buy for him, I send to him. Why? Because I know how the laws of the blessing works, the laws of a junior to a senior. Many Christians today are broke because they don't understand this kind of laws. You, you don't understand the law of God giving you somebody that you become one spirit, one mind with that person. That person become the voice of God for you. And you bless the person. And the person release the surplus, the multiplication. Many people don't know it. That's why they are going from pastors to pastors to prophet to... I just give to one person. As long as that man is alive, he gets my money. I never, I don't go to so to give to this pastor because they are doing some miracles. I don't do that. I wasn't sent there. That's why many of you do not get any harvest. Because you hear that somebody is doing miracles that you go to Guam so there so that you can get some miracles. Somebody is doing prophecy that you go. That's why you are not getting anything. Because those people are not for you. You are trying to to go to them. You are not called there. Your name is not in the book of those people. And that's what is killing a lot of you. Because secretly you are giving your money to different, different people. Secretly. And you think God doesn't see it. That's why there is no systematic giving in one place. There's no listening to one voice. <sighs> when it comes to a spiritual father thing, or a spiritual mother, because you can have either or. You cannot have both. If you have a spiritual mother, you cannot have a spiritual father. If you have a spiritual father, you cannot have a spiritual mother. You can only be given one throughout your lifetime. As long as that person leaves. That's how it goes. So, soulmate is a very, very intensive, something very, very intricate, very sensitive. So don't just declare that somebody is your soulmate. And then later they walk away. And what happened to that soulmate? If that person is your soulmate, they will stay forever. And if they talk to you, in fact, they will protect you. They will bless you. They will give you the best of the earth. Everything they do, they include you. If they hear anybody want to do you harm, they fight for you. That person will fight for you. He will fight for you like a wrestler. That person will become your painkiller. Your Tylenol. Your ibuprofen, your aspirin. <laughs> that person will become your flu shot. <laughs> to protect you from the nasty flus. <laughs> yep. You have to be aware of this. When we say when we say soul made it's a big thing. That man or that woman hears something from his or her own family say no 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 no. You guys cannot go there. That's my person. I know this person more than you guys know this person. You guys have to rally behind me. Don't go there. Don't go there. It's a no-go area. That's a danger zone. You don't you don't go there. Mm. 
That's why even though Moses and Aaron and Miriam were brothers and sisters, yet Moses and Aaron and Miriam, they were not soulmates. Moses' soulmate was his father-in-law, Jethro. You have to be aware of who was whose soulmate in the Bible. Yeah. So was Jonathan and David soulmates? Yes, they were. They were soulmate right. until Jonathan passed away and David mourned. When that person passes away, a part of you dies with that person. So go and look at the poetry David wrote for Jonathan. You'll know how deep that he will give his life for Jonathan. You say, slay me so that he can live. That's the kind of thing we are talking about. Somebody that you can die for. Even if they pay you a billion dollars, you cannot, you cannot release information against that person. That's the kind of thing we are talking about. This is not about the mob or about the gangster thing. No, we are talking of something very strong. You keep that person secret forever. To never be known. That person keep yours. The business secret, the money secret, everything. After that, in David's life, you see the next person David became a soulmate with was who? Who did David become a soulmate with? After after Jonathan died. Bathsheba. Thank you. Yeah, Bathsheba. Most of David's wealth came from Abigail and also came from his, his, uh, his war. But the person that he had intimate relationship with than any woman on earth was Bathsheba. That's why Bathsheba's son, Solomon, became the king. Apart from the fact that it is said that you, we should not worship people, but Sheba bowed before her husband more than the rest of the wives of David. She was the one that knew him, knew his strength, his weakness, and also she learned. But Sheba was like Esther. She learned the protocols of David and the protocols of the courts of David. She saw David, first of all, as her king. Number two, as her savior, her ruler, her deliverer, then her husband. When she's coming to see David from the big palace David built for that woman, she will call David's secretary and say, can I talk with my Lord? She never even called David my husband. Can I talk with my Lord, my king? It's very powerful. It's very moving stuff. Very few women have that kind of thing. It's all gone. Esther has the same. Abigail has it. Rebecca has it. Sarah has it. Hannah has it. Deborah has it. Just go through the history of these women. They were, the, they were what we will call the, the, the cherubic and the seraphic kind of mentality. They had the angelic, the high class angel mentality. Very high. Top class. And they were all very wealthy women. They didn't come to David's house empty hand. They didn't come to the houses of their husbands empty. Mm -mm. Nope. They came in as equal, in power and in might. They came in with money and wealth. They came with greatness, not in weakness. They didn't come to beg for anything. And yet their husband gave them everything. They didn't need it, but they got it. Mm, this is powerful stuff tonight.
Whew. Just watch the man or the woman that understand the protocol of your profession. They are the one that wins. Never come to control, but they came to rule. Never jealous, never envious of other people around these men and women. That's why you see any husband that is very jealous of her wife's professional colleagues and people, it's, it's going to be out before you know it very soon. Sooner or later. Every phone call, they want to know. Everything you're doing. Why wasn't I included? Well, baby girl, that didn't include you. Just get it. Go and look at how. That's, that's the reason why Elizabeth II, the Queen of England, she's been there for a long time. Many things she does, you never even see her husband near there. Have you seen have you seen her on television? Have you seen her on television? It's in rare occasion that demand that her husband be there with her that you see her husband is there with her. Is that not true? Huh? I never seen it with her husband. There you go. Ever. Only when he demands that he has to be there, then he will be there. Either he is there, and of course, whenever he is there with her, he is there as the prince of, is it the prince of Edinburgh or whatever? He's there as a prince. <laughs> not even as, not a king. Many of you will say, hey, since you are a queen, I shall be the king. Rubbish. You can have a king and a queen at the same time in that kingdom. In some kingdoms, you do. You have a king, you have a queen. But in the kingdom of of England, you can either have a queen or you have a queen or a king. One or the other. You cannot be both. So those of you men who want to go and show you are mature, you are the man, you are the this, uh -uh, the house of Tudor is not for you. That's what they call the house of the queen. The house of the house of the Tudors is not for you. If you are if you are the kind of man that wanna go and play the male role, just just back off. That's not for you, my dear. It's not gonna work for you. You'll find yourself six feet down before you know it. There are some women and men who have tried that, they are all gone. <laughs> It's like the house of sword in Saudi Arabia. It's a male thing. So you have to know the protocol of where you are called to come and serve or to come and be a part of. Like this guy that was killed in the Saudi consulate. When I will do a program on him, which I will just hope that I have the time to finally do it, come to that, I'm asking different questions. Because he knew a lot. And I know that they didn't want him to tell the West what he knows. That's why they that's why they let him go. And of course, royal household has been letting people go. I mean, when I say letting them go, I mean do them in. If they beg you not to go, they beg you to stay. They give you position, they give you money, they give you everything and say, we don't want you to keep talking. Please protect us. Because we will be in disgrace. We will be destroyed by what you are going to do. If you still refuse, then they go to that land. That's what happened to that guy. Don't, don't let me say a lot that I know. I don't want to say. There are so many people that have died and we all keep quiet. Because those who knows, knows. How it goes. Personally, if it is me, I won't talk. I'm just being frank. Because there's a place you reach in life, you know what we call the game of the kings or the games of the of the queens. If you didn't want to be a part, if you didn't want to play along, why did you even get yourself involved in, in the first place? That's how it goes. That's why Joseph walked with the Pharaoh, never criticized the Pharaoh for worshipping other gods, never. Did you ever hear 
that the husband of Esther was a Christian or a Jew? No. Or that the king over Joseph was a Jew and worshipped the supreme God? No. And did you ever hear Esther trying to convert her husband? Or Joseph trying to convert his pharaoh? No. You have to know how this thing goes. You have to know how these things is played. And I can tell you from the bottom of my heart that Prince Philip and Elizabeth II are soulmate. They are. Are you guys listening to me tonight? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, her husband. See, her husband is her prince. Not, not the king. And she is the queen. So his role is just the role of a prince. The same role that, that the children of Queen Elizabeth, who are the children of Prince Philip. They are, they are prince and princesses. That, that big family. So I want you to be aware of this. I want you to be aware of this. If they don't need him, he's not there. And he doesn't ask no question. That's the reason those who came to ask questions, those who came to do their own thing, they are all gone. Like Princess Diane, Diana, which is not a good thing to even come and talk about. Because that, was, that wasn't a good thing. The way she was married and the way she left and the way she died is not good. It's a, very, it's a very bad thing. But you have, I'm saying this to you so that you understand what a soulmate is. And that you should also understand the protocols of the kings and the queens and of royal households. For example, you go into all these royal families in South in the in the in the Middle East, you see that the money of the nation is also their money. It's all is 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 intertwined. Much of what they built, much of the investment, they are doing it for the nation. But it's people from the royal household whose signature is there. So you cannot remove one from the other. This is a very intricate thing. If I work for those people, I won't say nothing. I'll work with them with my whole heart. And give, not just because of money, but because that's a good place to work. So I don't understand all, all these criticisms that also is going to actually destroy a whole nation. I don't want to be the one that destroys a whole nation. I don't want to be. It's not a good thing. Especially they've begged you, they've made you see reasons why you shouldn't. So with soulmate also goes, do that person understand your protocol, the protocol of who you are and your class? That's why it's very dangerous to marry people who are below your class. Very dangerous thing. Unless that kind of person comes to learn, sensitive to learn. If you come to work for me and, you, and I'm supposed to pay you $20 and I end up paying you $50 because you did a great job coming to mow my lawn. Everybody see you working hard and all of that. I expect when you leave that place to send me a text message or an email or send me a card to say thank you. You should be sensitive. That's why of all of David's wife, the one that was the most sensitive was Bathsheba.
So Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, they are, they are soulmates. Bill Clinton and Hillary, they are soulmates. Laura Bush and Bush Jr., they are soulmates. Barbara Bush and Bush Sr., they are soulmates. Michelle and Barack, they are soulmates. That I can say for sure. That I can say for sure. I can. They are. I can go on naming people. Let me stop there. But those are people that I really know. So it's not just soulmate, they are also professional mates, people that will be your colleagues forever. Money mate. So you have to know all this so that you can survive the yet and become blessed, be fruitful, multiply in every good thing, in every good way. Uh, now it's time for people to ask questions. Please, if you have questions, ask before we, we let it go. So, uh, I have a question. Yeah. How long until you know someone just saw me? When it begins... Uh -huh. Do anybody want to answer that question? Anybody want to answer? How long does it take? I would say, uh -huh. I would say it takes time. Well, you need time. You need time to study the other person's ways. There will be what we call attraction. You are going to see you in that person, and that person in you. You are, you are going to see that person as your hero, and that person will see you as as uh, he saw her hero. And there will be thing about that. There will be things about that person that is just primarily you things that you tap into and that blesses you all the time all the time that's how it is yeah mm -hmm. that's how it is there are some okay. some 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 soulmate thing just happens and you know it and it just goes it doesn't stop Others, it takes you a little bit of time for you to grasp it, especially for those who have come out of bad relationships. It will take some time for you to grasp it. When you grasp it, it's over. It's sinking to you. It becomes part of you. It's stronger than emotion. <laughs> it's something that is very, very strong. And for that person, for other people, when you when you need money or material resources to solve other people, it may, might not be that proof, but for this person, it's always there. You come as number one. That person comes as number one. Everything that person does, your name is part of it. If there is a business that person wants to invest into, that person calls you first. And how do you and say, do you want to go with me? And it's always yes. And both of you will go and share very, very big profit. Okay, somebody else has a question? Anybody? Uh, you could have a best friend as a soulmate. I do not hear you. I said you could have a best friend as a soulmate. Uh -huh. You can have a best friend as a soulmate. That's true. You can have your best friend as a soulmate, like we've we've described uh, what went on between David and uh, and Jonathan. Yeah, your best friend can become your soulmate, and it's a very very strong thing. All right, that's very good. Okay, who has any contribution or any um, question? All right. Well, we want to drop it here for tonight. I'll see you guys tomorrow evening.
at uh, eight o'clock, uh, seven o'clock central, eight o'clock eastern. All right. Tomorrow is tomorrow is what we are ready in tomorrow yeah, today. 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 Yeah, Friday. All right. Good night. Bye bye. Thank you for coming. Thank you.